गुड आफ्टरनून माय सेल्फ धीमंत भैंसतड़िया आई एम ए लेक्चरर इन अमरेली साइंस कॉलेज टुडे इज माय टॉपिक इज सेल्स इन्वॉल्व इन ह्यूमरल इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स सो बिफोर टू अंडरस्टैंड द्यूमन ह्यूमरल इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स इट इज नेसेसरी टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज इम्यूनिटी सो इम्यूनिटी इज कंसिडर एज अ कैपेसिटी ऑफ इम्यून सिस्टम्स टू इवोक द इम्यून सिस्ट इम्यून रिस्पॉन्स अगेंस्ट द फॉरन एंटीजन अगेंस्ट द फॉरन पार्टिकल्स सो इम्यूनिटी कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन अ वेरियस टाइप्स यू कैन से दैट सो फर्स्ट नेचुरल इम्यूनिटी सेकेंड टाइप देट इज द एक्वायर्ड इम्यूनिटी देर आर थ्री डिफेंस मेकेनिजम्स इन्वॉल्व इन under the title of immunity first one that is the external defense mechanism second one that is the internal defense mechanisms and third one that is the immune defense mechanisms all these three defense mechanisms work at different stage as we seen in our powerpoint presentations the first line defense can be involved in a certain physiological barrier including skin mucosal membrane certain secretion of skin uh, perspiration etc second line defense involves certain non specific immunological cells including phagocytic cells certain antimicrobial peptides certain inflammatory immune response etc but first line defense and second line defense mechanisms consider as a non specific immune defense that means it is common for any foreign particles whatever foreign particles enter in our body that will be gives a uh, immune defense against our non specific immune defense but the third line defense that is highly specific defense mechanisms and in the third line defense mechanisms we will see a certain humoral immunity or humoral immuno defense immuno response as we seen in our powerpoint presentations overview of immunity including two types acquired immunity and certain natural immunity or innate immunity but today is our interested part that is related with acquired immunity acquired immunity is against involved in active and passive immunity as we seen in a figure of powerpoint presentations certain various examples of active and passive immunities given by naturally as well as in artificially next that is whenever any particular foreign particles consider as antigen enter in our body at that times a specific defense mechanisms gives mainly two types of immunity first one that is the cell mediated immunity second one that is the antibody mediated immunity or you can say that humoral immunity cell mediated immunity directly physically attacked on a particular antigen through certain chemical secretions while antibody mediated hum- immunity or humoral immunity attacked on a particular antigen through uh, weapons of antibody there are various elements involved in a humoral immune response including b cell antigen presenting cells t helper cells plasma cells antibody etc first of all we will discuss about the b cells b cell cell is a uh, only cells which is synthesize as well as mature inside the bone marrow and b cell b cell is consider as a major parts to involve the antibody mediate immune response b cells consider as a two types effector b cell as well as a memory b cells actually effector b cells convert into plasma cells plasma cells release antibody and uh, resting cells converted into memory cells first we discuss how b cells has been prepared and has been become uh, uh, capable to evoke the antibody to evoke the antibody mediate immune response so first of all as we knowing uh, any particular immunological cells synthesize in a bone marrow as a form of hematopoietic stem cells after the synthesis of hematopoietic stem cells a certain receptor proteins in a, in a form of receptor markers uh, attach on a particular surface of b cells in a form of certain cd43 cd19 such types of marker attach on the surface of the b cells and this b cells is now ready for become a mature b cells in futures and such types of b cells which gives the first identity as a b cells is known as progenitor b cells or pro b cells after the synthesis of progenitor b cells certain receptor start to attach on the surface of the b cells first of all certain heavy chain attach on a particular surface of b cells in a form of vdj joinings and heavy chain containing b cells heavy chain actually attach on a surface of b cells and this cells is known as precursor b cells or pre b cells as we shown step by step eventual development of b cells uh, after synthesis of pre b cells now now this b cells is ready to synthesize uh, light chains and once heavy chain and light chain that means complete 
B cell receptors located on the surface of B cells, this B cells is now qualified as a immature B cells or you can say that new B cells. Still, up to the development of immature B cells, this phase of development of B lymphocytes is known as antigen independent B cell maturation because in this development the presence of antigen is not required but the next phase of development of B cells which requires the presence of antigens that's why the next phase is considered as a antigen dependent B phase and after the exposure of antigens now the B cell receptor located on a B cells getting certain specific immune specificity against the invaders antigens and now the specificity containing B cell receptor B, uh, B cell receptor is now known as a mature B cells. So that mature B cells now ready to pro activate, now ready to proliferate and now ready to synthesize or differentiate in plasma cells as well as in a memory cells. So once any B cells become activated, they start to proliferate it. So this is the short introduction of B cells which is considered as a key elements for the humoral immune response for the antibody mediate immune response. Next elements for the antibody mediate immune response that is the memory B cells. It is nothing new, it is a one type of B cell but once the B cells converted in a form of certain resting stage that means G0 stage of their life cycles then it is considered as a memory B cells. Memory B cells is the long life cells and which is divided very few times and persist in a uh, lymphatic tissue. Once a uh, same antigens again encountered in a particular individuals immediately that memory B cells has become activated and start to pro proliferate and that is why the secondary immune response is quite faster as compared to the primary immune response. So this is the second elements of antibody mediate immune response. The third next elements of the humoral immune response that is the T helper cells. Actually T helper cell having the central role. T helper cell also play the main roles in the activation of cell mediate immune response and same T helper cell also play a very important role for the activation of humoral immune response. That is why we are considering the T helper cell as a, in a central role and T helper cells can be activated with the help of particular antigen presenting cell. As we seen certain development of humoral and cell mediate immune response on a power on a particular slides whenever any particular antigens enter in an individual host that host process this antigens, separate the antigenic peptides and this antigenic peptide display through the MHC class 2 proteins by a specific antigen presenting cell. This antigen presenting cells presents the antigenic peptides or antigenic proteins towards the T helper cells through the MHC class 2 proteins. Once T helper cells recognize any particular antigenic peptides with a MHC class 2, they become activated and certain signaling pathway start inside the T helper cells and as an end product of the signaling pathway, either T helper cells release interleukin 4 that interleukin folds activate the B cells, that B cells converted into plasma cells, plasma cells release the antibody and this way is known as the induction of antibody mediate immune response. But if a T helper cells found certain specific multivalent or lipidious material, in this case this T helper cells release certain interleukin 2 like cytokines, this interleukin 2 activated the B cells, uh, sorry T uh, so cytotoxic cells, T cytotoxic cell has become activated, this T cytotoxic cells proliferated and release certain cytotoxin. So this way is considered as a cell mediate immune response. In initially T helper cell is considered as a TH0 cells but once it will become induce certain cell mediate immune response and release the interleukin 12 like cytokines it is considered as a TH1 subset 1 T helper cells. Another types of TH2 that is subset 2 helper cells which is release interleukin 4 like cytokines and induce the antibody mediate immune response. Next elements of a particular antibody mediate immune response that is the plasma cells any B cells gives a specific instruction and generate the plasma cells. Plasma cell is considered as a factory of antibody. During the lifespan, plasma cells synthesize only a single specificity antibody and 
this plasma cells having the capacity to synthesize 2000 antibody per seconds and plasma cells is the cartwheel like structures plasma cells release antibody two to four to five days lifespan of uh, particular age periods and this plasma cell is short lived after four to five days automatically it will be eliminated and during this release uh, thousands of or lakhs of antibody during their lifespan next and last you can say that elements of antibody mediate immune response that is antibody itself antibody having a uh, very well known structures mainly antibody divide in a two uh, fragment first one that is the variable region second fragment is known as fc fragment constant fragment variable region is responsible to give a specificity to antibody against the various types of antigens variable parts is known as paratops or antigen binding site which is specifically bind with the epitopes region of antigen antibody having a various class particularly five class of antibody found in a individual immune systems uh, IgM, IgG, IgA, IgE and IgD these are the name of classes of antibody the, all these antibody classes have their own unique structure as well as unique property like molecular weight, uh, valency, specific binding capacity etc. After the selection of a specific clone first of all any antigens enter in our body that antigen sensitize the particular b cells and this sensitized b cells become you can say that uh, activated for before activations the clonal selection is the most important events for the humoral immune response there are so many clone of b cells available in our body and this each and every clone having a specific B cell receptor on their surface. Once any antigen enter in our body, according to the epitope region of antigens, a specific clone is select. Always our immune system select a B clones which required the minimum changes to give the specificity against the epitope of antigens and such types of B cell clone has been selected and after the selection of B cell clone that B cells clone has become activated. For the activation of B cells required uh, various mechanisms you can say that uh, these mechanisms includes uh, mainly two mechanisms. T helper cell dependent mechanisms or you can say the thymus dependent mechanisms for the B cell activation and thymus independent mechanisms for the B cell activation. But if any B cells activated either through the thymus dependent antigens or thymus independent antigens, this B cells is required uh, two signals considered as a signal 1 and signal 2. It is known as two signal model for the immune response. And if the two signals is generated inside the particular B cells, now these B cells are ready ready to activate, active after activation is ready to proliferate and synthesize uh, specific plasma cells which produce the specific antibody against the antigens. First we discuss T dependent antigens, certain uh, B cells required the presence of T cells for the activation, these are known as T dependent activation of B cells certain antigens enter in our body that will be presented to T helper cells and sometimes T helper cells need to present antigenic peptides against the B cells. In this case as we seen in a figure certain antigenic uh, antigen presenting cells presents the specific uh, antigenic peptides through the MHC class 2 and that antigenic peptides recognized by T cell receptors located on a T helper cells. T helper cells uh, getting certain informations from the antigenic peptides. First of all CD4 marker of T helper cells binds on invariant region of MHC. Once that T CD4 getting or recognize the MHC class 2 then and then this T helper cell allowed to bind the T cell receptor with a specific antigenic peptide. Once so any specific antigenic peptides received on T cell receptors, certain signaling pathway can start in invariant region of uh, T cell receptor, it is known as ITAMS regions and this will start to signal transductions. This signal transduction gives certain transcription factor and through this transcription factors T helper cell has become activated. Sometimes T helper cells release specific types of interleukins or cytokines and only this cytokines is enough to activate the B cells. In a certain case, uh, T helper cell received certain antigenic peptides and T helper cells physically contact with the B cells through uh, T cell receptor. Whenever T cell receptors uh, 
presents the antigenic peptide T cell receptors getting in contact with a particular B cell receptors and it will create certain ternary complex. Ternary complex means a CD40 marker presence on a B cells that will be contact with CD40L presence on a T cells, TCR, T cell receptor and B cell receptors and next one that is B7 family and CD28 family joint with each other and gives the ternary bridge between the T cell and B cells and this bridge is very important events for the synthesis of signal 2. Previously, whenever any naked antigens directly received on a surface of B cells through the certain B cell receptor, it already synthesized signal 1. In this way, signal 1 and signal 2 induce the B cells and activate the B cells and ready to proliferate the B cells in a specific circulatory system. So, this figure shows the ternary complex between the CD40 and CD40L. TL, uh, sorry, T cell receptor and B cell receptor and B7 and CD28 markers. So, these three bridge activate uh, signal 2 and in the presence of signal 1 and signal 2, uh, B cells start to activate or B cells start to proliferate. So, such types of mechanisms is known as thymus dependent antigen activation of B cells in which the T cells presence is must required for the activation of B cells. Well, in a certain case, whenever particularly antigen is in a polyvalent in nature, polymers in nature, a specific glycolipid, nucleic acid, such types of antigens having capacity to cross links on a B cell receptor presence on B cells and whenever such types of B cell receptors cross link by a specific multivalent or polymers of antigens, this B cell receptor getting both signals, signal 1 as well as signal 2 inside the B cells and this B cells is become activated and start to proliferate. In this case, thymus independent antigen activations, the presence of thymus is not necessary, is not required, only naked antigen is enough to introduce both signals, signal 1 and signals 2 and once signal 1 and 2 getting by specific B cells automatically it will become activated and it will be proliferated and from the proliferated B cells majority part is considered as a effector B cells which is ready to convert into plasma cells and very minor parts is converted into memory cells which is considered as a storehouse of B cells. Again the same antigens encountered in an individual host automatically that B memory cells has become activated and again it will become effector B cells and ready to synthesize plasma cells and give certain antibody mediate immune response. After the synthesis of antibody a certain amount of antibody synthesized in a primary level in a IgM class, but such amount of IgM antibody is sometimes not enough. So, in this case, uh, a antibody class switching phenomenon is required. A specific another class of antibody has been released. A huge amount of CD40 and CD40L is synthesized. Uh, enough amount of antibody is not available in our body at that time. Uh, another class of antibody is need to synthesize and in this case uh, various another class IgG, IgD class of antibody is released and this is known as class switching phenomenon of antibody. And in this way finally antibody has been synthesized in our body. But the main difference whenever any memory cells stored in our body at that time a specific clone available in our body. So, same antigens again enter in our body automatically that clone is ready and that clone is directly become activated and start to proliferate. So, always whenever any antigens enter in our body in a first times at that times our immune systems required to synthesize first clone and it is a time consuming process that is why the primary immune response required certain longer period as well as the primary immune response is poor. While once any clone has been prepared in a form of B memory cells and the same antigens is enter in our body, the clone is already ready. That clone already is automatically very fastly selected by a particular immune systems and after the selection of B cell clone, it is direct ready to activate and proliferate in our body and gives the faster immune response and that is why the secondary immune response is faster and gives a higher immunity as compared to the primary immune response and this graph shows the level of immune response between the primary immune response as well as in a secondary immune response and in this way a final conclusion 
of how B cell has become activated or how B cell has been synthesized certain antibody that will be shown in a particular transparency uh, specific chart in which you can see that uh, B cell has become activated directly through the ant antigens or first of all B cell uh, sorry antigens can be received by particular antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells, macrophage etc. First of all that uh, phagocytis process process the antigens then present these antigens towards the T helper cells, T helper cell has become activated and after the activation of T helper cells, T helper cell presents the B uh, antigen to the against the B cells, B cells has become activated. So, in this way uh, B cells has been activated either directly from the uh, antigens or through the T helper cells and B cells activated and after that it will start their cycles from G0 to G1 phase, G1 to S phase and S phase to finally mitosis phase in a form of M phase and start to proliferate and in this way the amount of B cell has become increased in our body and this B cells finally converted into plasma cells and this plasma cells release a specific antibody which is binds on a particular antigenic peptides on antigens and destroy the antigens and this is known as humoral immune response. It is totally mediated by antibody that is why it is also known as antibody mediate immune response. Actually antibody is always found in a liquid forms and the meaning of liquid in a Greek it is humor and that is why this immune response is taken or mediated by through the antibody. That is why this immune response is also considered as a humoral immune response. Up to this phase, we dis we seen that how antibody has been synthesized after the proliferation of B cells and plasma cells. Now, how this antibody fight with particular antigen, fight against the antigens, that is considered as a mechanism of humoral immune response, and that we will discuss by my colleagues, Dr. Himansu Bhimani, discuss the mechanism of humoral immune response. Please, sir. Good afternoon everyone, uh, sir has explained us in detail how this uh, antibody is produced. Now during this lecture we have mainly seen that and we have mainly listened the word antibody, antibody and as sir has uh, in the last sentence we can say he has justified that this antibody is always found in a liquid and as we know that blood has uh, two component cellular component and liquid component. If we give the name, uh, it is a uh, cellular component is a we can say white blood cell, red blood cell and platelets. On the other hand, the liquid contains serum, uh, different, uh, different uh, proteins etc. So, similarly, so blood is a very important point and in that sense blood is the site where immunology concerns maximum. That is the reason. And similarly in immunology, we have two types of uh, immunity, cell mediated immunity and uh, the second is humoral immunity. The cell mediated immunity involves the cells which is a uh, particulate. We can give example of uh, dendritic cell, macrophages and certain white blood cells. So, how this uh, antibody which is in liquid form, how this antibody compact with the antigen that has entered inside the body and that is known as mechanism of humoral immune response. As you can see in the slide, there are total of six main different uh, methods through which this antibody will fight with the foreign particle which is known as antigen. The first one is neutralization, the second is agglutination, third is opsonization, fourth is antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. Uh, activation of complement and the last one, the sixth mechanism is inflammation. We will discuss all these six one by one, but first of all, let us have a short introduction like uh, what is neutralization? Neutralization is the process which involves IgG type of antibody, mainly it is IgG because as we know that immunoglobulins are of five different types. IgG, IgD, IgM, IgA and IgE. Now, in the process of neutralization, IgG inactivates the viruses or certain toxins which are produced by viruses and by doing so, this antibody is doing two things. The first, it 
uh, we can say it stop this toxin to uh, attach with his its a uh, host cell for example uh, if it is botulism in the case where botulin is a toxin that has uh, the effect uh, that will effect on the neurons okay so it will give you neuro neurotoxicity so if these toxins are free in the blood they will find its way and they will affect the neurons so here what antibody is doing antibody will come and bind with this toxins so now this toxin is not free to move to its original host cell to cause some uh, adverse effect on the on the human body now the second thing this antibody will not just bind with this antigen but it will also cause some configurational changes and as we know that inside the body it is all about chemistry and it is also known as biochemistry so chemistry means chemicals they have got certain specific shape and they have certain specific configuration say for example if it is antibody it has we sir has explained that it has a, a specific light chain heavy chain and once this antibody is in its intact form then only it will be able to fight with the antigen so what i mean to say in the case of neutralization this antigen when binds with this antibody there will be uh, configurational changes that leads to failure of the antigen to act as a antigen in that case not only that now this complex is known as immune complex antigen and antibody here in this first mechanism antigen is a toxin this toxin binds with the antibody and that is known as immune complex this immune complex is dragged towards the uh, macrophages like uh, cells so second one is agglutination as our antibody is in a liquid form and if antigen is in a liquid form that means the solute and solvent both are in liquid form that can be uh, considered as a process of precipitation so that is uh, another mechanism but here agglutination means we have colloidal colloidal antigen so here we can say if it is microorganism this antibody antibody will cause these antigens to clump together and here in this the function as we have seen that total of five different antigen sorry antibody uh, amongst these five igm which is pentavalent in structure that is most significant that will do this job very efficiently so heme agglutination is clumping means bringing all these antigens together and helping uh, the defense mechanism to destroy them the third one is opsonization opsonization in salt we are going to discuss all this mechanism in detail in the proceeding slides but this is just to give you a uh, short idea what exactly this mechanisms are so third opsonization is the antigen which is covered with the antibodies that enhance its ingestion and lysis by phagocytic cell the fourth one is cell dependent antibody dependent uh cell mediated cytotoxicity now here as the name itself says cell mediated and we are discussing antibody antibody is liquid still we are uh, taking help of a cell and again here there is a toxicity means cytotoxicity means toxic effect will be given to cyto means cell so here uh, it is important to understand these things like this is used this fourth mechanism is used to destroy the antigen when it is of large size say for example what could be the large size uh, for example uh, cancerous cell cancerous cells are our body's own cells which are bigger in size that is difficult to engulf through the process of phagocytosis in that case when this cannot be engulfed directly we must have something else so here the uh, alternation of this is the target organism which is coated with the antibodies is bombarded with the chemicals from non specific immune cells the fifth one is a uh, complement activation complement activation is a uh, a kind a uh, kind of a cascade mechanism and that is a completely separate mechanism but this mechanism is activated by 
these immunoglobulins, especially IgG and IgM. This both the immunoglobulins triggers the complement system which result in the cell lysis. The last one, uh, inflammation. Inflammation is a process and uh, we uh, in routine life also, uh, the last inflammation is the mechanism that we used to come across like e even in our routine life sometimes if we uh, got certain bite uh, from some honeybees or uh, even mosquito we find that the localized area is uh, enlarged in size so it is one uh, uh, we can say it's a symptom or uh, characteristics of inflammation we'll see the first mechanism neutralization in the pre in the slides we have discussed that neutralization means something we want to neutralize say for example there is acid in a, a flask and if you and that has a ph in acidic range if you want to neutralize the ph of that solution what we do is we add certain alkaline compounds so here something uh, related to that we can say like uh, toxins has been entered in the body this toxin will find its host and host has been shown in a blue color as you can see in the slide blue color toxin uh, blue color host cell has receptor like as we have discussed earlier also it is all about the chemistry here the toxin does not have eyes host cell does not have high eyes but still they are very specific to each other that is because of the presence of receptors epitopes etc so receptors are there in absence of I um, mean, uh, this antibodies in uh, uh, in a regular uh, method. What will happen? That bacterial toxin will find its way. It will go and attach to the host cell. But if there is antibody produced against that toxin, what will do? What will happen? That antibody has two regions: uh, F A B region, which is uh, usually uh, the region where antigen is bind. Whereas it has one more region, F C region. As you see that in the figure, this antibody is uh, bivalent, means it has two projections. The structure, uh, its structure is like Y alphabet. So, this two projection binds with this toxin and the single projection which is extending on the back side, which is known as FC region. This FC region has receptors, not on the host cells, but on the uh, macrophages. So not only this antibody is uh, making configurational changes to toxins, but it also drag these toxins and uh, it comes in contact with the macrophages. So once th the they come in contact with the macrophages, there will be uh, phagosome will be synthesized and phagosome will uh, later on bind with the lysosome and degradation of this toxin will happen. And the next, uh, the neutralization. Neutralization, as we have seen that it is the game of the antibody. Now, how this antibody is produced in our body? There are three processes, three ways. Uh, because of that, our body can have this antibiotic. The first one is the previous infection. Say, for example, at present, your body has got exposure of this toxin. It may happen that your, uh, you have got the um, uh, exposure of the same toxin previously also before 2 year, 5 or 10 year. So at that time, as sir has mentioned in his speech, speech that memory cell, again it is a type of B cell only. So memory cells has capacity to remember what uh, the complete database of the previously exposure antigen because of the availability of this database it will produce directly immediately the antibody so in your blood you will find this antibody the second one is artificial immunization if you have not encountered uh, exposure of this toxin previously what you can do is uh, this can be said is a kind of vaccination so second is artificial immunization and uh, here attenuated toxins are being used Attenuated toxins are also known as toxoids. So toxoid is the second method by which antibody against this toxin can be produced in your body. And third one is your body need not to produce antibody. If you have exposure, the severe concentration of toxin, what 
uh, can be done as an emergency in that case the ready-made antibody which has been prepared in other uh, animal that is transferred passively as anti serum. As you can see in the figure, uh, the first figure is uh, uh, neutralization. Here, uh, different antibodies are joining with the viral particles or bacterial particle, and then by doing so, it will drag them to the macrophages. The third, on the uh, third figure, you are observing that is uh, agglutination. And agglutination is the next point we are going to discuss. Agglutination means clumping together. Uh, one technique is also known as heme agglutination, where heme means, as we all know, blood, heme means iron that is present in the red blood cell. So, as you can see in the figure, no anti shift RBC antibody, you won't find any. All these red blood cells are uh, united with each other and they are free. The next figure you are observing with anti ship RBC antibodies. Here you are observing these red blood cells are attached with each other, not directly, but with the help of antibodies. So, this antibody forms lattice structure and this is one of the method for compacting with this agglutination, uh, compacting with this antigens that has entered in the human body. As I had mentioned previously, the difference between agglutination and precipitation as we can see here, uh, the antibodies penta um, IgM type antibody has uh, attached to red blood cells and the next one is uh, the precipitation. The next mechanism is opsonization. Opsonization has something similar, uh, we can say similar method as we have discussed previous method like in uh, this opsonization extracellular bacteria has invented invented inside the body now macrophages now if macrophages directly attack this that will be considered as cell mediated immunity cell mediated immune response but still we are considering macrophages here in humoral while we are discussing humoral immunity still that also we are discussing macrophages, but this process can be done only with the help of antibody. So, the crucial important role is being played by antibody and antibody are the example of humoral response. So, what happens that opsonization is the specialized process when the antigen is having something coated on their outer side. For example, capsule. As we all know the capsule are gelatinous material and usually pathogenic organisms uh, are having this capsule. This capsule helps this pathogenic organism in different ways. One of the way is it helps in escaping from the macrophages. In presence of this capsule, the macrophage could not engulf and somehow if engulf this organism, it will be escaped from this engulfment. This engulfment is known as phagosome. So, uh, in presence of this uh, capsular material, the antigen will be escaped from phagosome. So, macrophage will fail to fight with this. Now, it will find, it will ask for some as assistance and that assistance is provided by antibody. This antibody, as we can see in the figure, this antibody will bind with the bacterial cell surface. Previously, what was the problem? That was because of this gummy gelatinous material, it was getting escaped from the macrophages. So, we are means the body needs something that anchor the antigen and this anchor are being provided by this antigen, uh, sorry antibody. These antibodies are known as opsonin. The antibodies which attach to the bacterial cell, they have one FC fragment free which has not bind anywhere, FAB region bind with the antigen. So, this FC region has got, uh, has got its receptors on uh, macrophages. So, now as you can see in the figure that now this bacterial cell has been engulfed and the bacterial cell has been anchored. Now, in this case as this FC receptor has hold the FC region of the antibody, this bacteria cannot escape and how this is how 
तो ऑप्शनाइजेशन हेल्प्स इन द रिमूवल ऑफ दिस एंटीजन द थर्ड इज ए डी सी सी विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एंटीबॉडी डिपेंडेंट सेल मीडिएटेड साइटोटॉक्सिसिटी हियर वी कैन सी दैट इट इज सेल मीडिएटेड मीन्स सेल हैज टू कम एंड प्ले अ सेंट्रल रोल बट हियर वाई एंटीबॉडी इज ऑल्सो इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज सेल्स आर देयर लाइक नेचुरल किलर सेल फेगोसाइट्स एवरीथिंग इज देयर बट दे आर अनेबल टू फाइंड द एंटीजन which is a specific antigen for example tumor cell as you can see in the figure tumor cell with the red center cell it has yellowish uh, white colored projection outside the cell these projections are antigen so this can be identified by uh, antibodies so here the antibody is the one which is bringing these two things together what is important is destruction of tumor cell with the help of natural killer cell but natural killer cell itself is unable to identify this tumor cell so it is the antibody which will make this killer cell to identify the tumor cell as we can see in the figure that fc receptors will find uh, this fc antibody which is attached to tumor cell so in the first step tumor cell antigen will be attached attacked by antibody it will remain attached to that tumor cell tumor cell will be dragged towards not this time macrophages but natural killer cell natural killer cell has uh, receptors on its uh, surface which does not identify tumor cells but it identifies the immunoglobulins so this receptor will uh, accept this antibody now the message will be passed on to the natural killer cell and as a result of that natural killer cell will produce certain chemicals these chemicals are known as cytotoxic uh, and it will degrade this tumor cell the target cell is covered with antibodies leaving this fc portion of the antibody staking outside the natural killer and other non specific cells that have receptors for fc region are stimulated to kill targeted cell the targeted organism is lysed by substance secreted by attacking cell here the attacking cell is natural killer cell and the uh, cell which is being attacked is tumor cell this is used to destroy large organism which cannot be phagocyte because being the tumor cell being body's uh, the itself cell it will it can be said as somewhat of similar size the next is a uh, complement activation pathway we will see in the next slide uh, this will give you detail idea about complement uh, fixation and complement activation sometimes what happens that uh, this uh, cell is too big in size which cannot be phagocyte and still if we want to destroy this antigen there are different mechanism this is one of them what will happen that this complement will come and play important role complement are total of 11 different complement which has got name like c1 to c9 if you say c1 to c9 that becomes total 9 but c1 has three sub type c1 p c1 q and c1 r this c1 has three and rest of the eight means 3 and 8 11 complement this complements were considered as heat label because a slight variation in heat was resulted in complete collapse of this mechanism this is a well developed well controlled cascade mechanism where all this activation of complement is dependent on the previous one first of all the c1 complement will come and bind with the antigen as you can see in the figure the membrane structure what you are observing that is the membrane of antigen this could be a bacteria also c1 will bind for the first to the cell 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 membrane and it will see all these complements i would like to draw your attention that these complements are a special kind of protein they are also known as uh, you might have listen about zymosomes zymosomes are the proteins which during their intact structure 
are remain inactive but once if you break the structure if you make config configurational changes they become active so this cascades this complements belongs to this category as you can see in the figure c1 will first bind there are uh, p and q as i mentioned c1 has three uh, types p and q they will form uh, one by one total of six subunits will be arranged and this six subunit will be held together by r type of complement what it will do is it will call c4 first of all after c1 c4 will come as you can see in the figure c4 will bind with the c1 it will be this c1 has asterase activity because of this asterase activity the c4 will be uh, converted into fragments the first fragment is uh, fragment a and the bigger fragment is b so all these complements are converted into two fragments smaller fragments is not important for this adcc reaction but it will be circulate into the body and it will uh, go and work for anaphylactic reactions whereas the fragment b which is bigger in size that has activity in this adcc reaction consequently this will also uh, produce uh, this will also call the c3 c2 and likewise the next 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 cascade will be called on up to complement 6 complement 6 will come and it will inserted inside the plasma membrane of the antigen but as we know that plasma membrane has dual nature as you can see in the figure it has got polar head and non polar tails so this up to c6 it is polar in nature so it can inserted into the polar head but for further penetration because of there is a uh, tail which is hydrophobic in nature this complements fails to penetrate up to that level so for that complement 7 and 8 comes which are uh, hydrophobic in nature because of that it will be able to prepare uh, and penetrate deeply into the cell membrane and the ultimately last cascade is the last complement is c9 this c9 will be arranged in a circular fashion as you can see in the figure this c9 subunits will be arranged in a circular fashion and that will create a complete hall in we next slide we will see that how it will look like as you can see below there is a um, violet colored uh, well like structure and you are observing dotted structure is a cell membrane so something is coming outside what happens that this has created a complete hall in the cell membrane so the cytoplasmic content of the antigen will be squeezed outside so in absence of cytoplasmic material or we can say once the cytoplasmic material is released outside the cell that will lead to the death of the antigen so as you can see in the slide like uh, complement pathway there are three main complement pathway the first we discuss is the example of classical complement activation pathway second is alternative pathway like alternative pathway may activate it activation does not start with c1 but it may start somewhere c3 or c4 in between so that is alternative pathway one more pathway is lactin pathway so this is complement activation the last one is inflammatory response this as you can see that in the figure this is the uh, we can say this is something different like this inflammation will occur when the invader or antigen is invading the tissue till time we had discussed the uh, antigen antibody reaction that was mainly occurring in blood and spleen and everywhere they were that means they were inside the body as you can see in this figure there is a iron uh, particle that has uh, entered invaded the living tissue now this is something different like what will happen that this will lead to the rupture of the host cell 
the host cell will be ruptured and it will release certain chemical messages here chemical messages which could be either debris of broken host cells or it could be certain part of antigen these chemical messages will be finding its way to nearest capillary through that capillary it will get inside the blood and blood as we have mentioned many times that blood is the site where all these uh, natural killer and phagocytic cells are uh, moving throughout the body so this natural killer cells and phagocytic cell will got message that okay there is something problem some antigen has entered it has invaded the tissue so they will move towards the site of invasion but there is some problem like these blood cells are moving inside the capillaries and they do not have like we can say they are not routinely found in the tissues so they have to come out of this capillary and it has to be go to the uh, right position so for that they will come closer to the uh, epithelial layer of the capillaries and as this will aggregate there will be enlargement this is known as engorgement of capillary now engorgement of capillary the increased number of these cells at that particular site will increase overall size that will also uh, compress the surrounding areas tissues and cell but the one important thing happens that as the enlargement of this uh, capillary happened there will be increased porosity so because of this increased porosity this as we can see in uh, the third step this uh, cells will squeeze and it will come outside it will go it will move towards the site of action and they will uh, react with the antigen not only that here this cells has additional responsibility to remove the vast and cell debris of host cell itself because this has invaded so there will be lysis some blood will be uh, released in a localized area the host cell tissue debris will be there so everything has to be removed thrown outside the cell so all this material will be thrown outside the cell in the form of pus so sometimes we find that some pus is coming outside from the inflated area so this is how these are the major mechanisms how this uh, antibody uh, bind and compact with this antigen so again uh if sir has something to say actually complement fixation is no doubt very important process for the uh, killing of specific antigens but complements also sometimes gives a uh, more strength between the binding of antigen and antibody sometimes what happens if uh, antigen and antibody is not bind for a proper time at that time what happens sometimes antigens is uh, become resistance against the antibody actually antibody wants to create certain configurational change in antigens but because of the lacking of uh, exposure times antibody is unable to create the change in antigen so in this case what happens uh, as a intermediate bridge a certain complement molecules bind uh, with antibody as well as antigen and because of the presence of complement molecules it makes the certain stronger complex between the antigen and antibody and during this phase antibody gets the enough times to kill the antigens and during this times antibody start to create certain configurational change in antigens and after a certain period of time because of this extra time which is provided by complement bindings uh, antibody successfully create certain changes in antigen and finally antigen has become neutralized or destroyed because of the effect of antibody now we will see uh, one more animations on a screens which gives the very clear idea about a particular humoral immune response as we seen a macrophage is ready to engulf the antigens black color antigens engulf by a macrophage in a form of phagosomes after the synthesis of phagosome this will mix with the lysozyme enzymes lysosomal enzymes this will makes the phagolysosomes and this phagolysosomes is known as antigen processing after the processed antigens a selected antigenic peptides selected 
through a particular phagocytic cells and these antigenic peptides display on phagocytic cell through the MHC class 2 proteins and this MHC class 2 protein is now ready to presence the antigenic peptides towards the T helper cells and now the helper cells is accept the antigenic peptides and further on after that a certain B cells has become activated and finally B cells release the antibody and finally this is, is considered as a humoral immune response induced by specific immune response. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.